Let's take a look at some Bluetooth controlled RGB tape and I'll show you it working first. And then I'll take the covering off this and we'll take a zoomed in look at the circuit board to see what's on it. I don't think it's going to be hugely complicated. I think everything is so crammed into Bluetooth microcontrollers these days that it's going to be simple. I'm going to be monitoring power with this little uh, USB device. I'll plug this in. It's a Ruadeng USB meter. And I shall just take this off momentarily to unlock it. Bring it in. And I shall select the app which is called Happy Lighting or Happy Light or something like that. Here it is. And hopefully it's connected to that. Has it connected to that? It may take a while before it connects. Maybe it's not connecting to that. Maybe it's doing absolutely nothing. Oh, no, I think something happened. No, it's not. Excellent. Well, this is good. Oh, no, now it's caught up. It took a while to catch on. But now it is connected. Take note, sometimes it takes a while for it to catch up. Okay, single colours. Red draws 675 milliamp for the run. I think this is, uh, I think this is five metres. Um, green is 659 milliamps for the run and blue is 685 but if you put them all on together at once in RGB white uh, it comes in about 1.45 amp it's not too bad it means it can be run off a 2 amp supply theoretically um, right, tell you what, I shall show you it in the dark so I'm going to take the exposure off and I'm just going to drop the light over here let's tame this down by looking at that. That's better. So you've got a colour wheel here that you can run your finger around and it goes through all the colours. So I could go to a nice magenta and you can fine tune it. Or I could try and get the closest we're going to get to an orangey colour on this, which is about that. Uh, you also have fixed colours. Red, green, blue, yellow, magenta, cyan, um, and it says preset and then it says standard. Maybe maybe this is just a uh, settings you could put yourself. It's got a picture of a light bulb here. I think this is supposed to emulate natural light. It really isn't. Red, green, blue never emulates that. But maybe you can actually program these. Not really played with that. If you go to style, it has effects like pulsating red, which will gently ramp up and down red, and you can change the speed of that. I'm not sure. When that would be terribly useful. You have cyan, oh let's not do the strobes, no, it's got lots of strobes uh, which are exactly as you think. Pulsating red and blue is a crossfader. If I put it up to the max, you could, it crossfades between them. The strobes, as mentioned there, they're just uh, the usual thing. Pulsating purple. That is just purple ramping up and down. It, they're pretty basic, to be honest. I think the most use you'd get out of this is actually doing something like that. You know, choosing, say for instance, a turquoise colour. Which is coming out in the screen as being a crisp bluey white. Ooh, it looks like germicidal ultraviolet. Now, if I then exit the app, it holds that colour. And if I unplug it, and plug it back in again, after a short delay... It reverts to a colour. Right, okay. I'm not sure if it has a facility to store the last colour, but this is what it's been come up ever since. So I'm guessing maybe this is just the default colour sort of gentle magenta. Right, tell you what. Um, I'm going to bring the light back and I'm going to um, take this apart. One moment, please. Okay, let's begin disassembly. I shall zoom up a little bit here. It says LED controller output less than equal to 144 watts, which is quite a lot, to be honest. But it says then put DC 5 to 12 volts. But uh, that's like, if this is a 5 volt input with a USB connector going out to 5 volt tape, it's literally, you can cut it per LED and it has three resistors per LED. Uh, the resistor values on those LEDs are uh, 101 220, oh sorry, 101, 100, 220 and 100. So the blue is 100 ohm, the green is 100 ohm, and the 220 is for the red LED because it's got a lower voltage. Let's part this. It's the usual little tiny little connector here. And let's see if we can nibble into this. 
but without uh, choppy antennas, I'd hope it's a PCB antenna. You just never know. I wonder if, uh, actually, no, I'm not sure that's a good idea. I think ordinary scissors might be better because they're sharper. I was going to use uh, Andy's super duper tough scissors. I don't even know if this is a good idea. I think I may slit it with Kane's knife. Let's gently slit right off the label and everything. Excellent. Oh, watch your thumb, big Clive. I will. I'll watch it as the blood oozes out. Oh, is this a single-sided circuit board? Well, I mean components uh, on one side. It does look like it. Uh, what am I seeing? I'm seeing a little antenna folded up over the back. I'm seeing uh, not much. Really, I'm seeing not much. I'm seeing the microcontroller. I'm seeing what I'm guessing a voltage regulator, a uh, little timing re reference crystal, and three transistors. Right, tell you what. One moment, please. The reverse engineering is, well, kind of complete. I'm not even going to draw this out. The component count is so low. If I drew it out, you'd have the voltage regulator, you'd have the processor with its crystal, you'd have a couple of decoupling capacitors here and there, and then you'd have three MOSFETs driving the LEDs. That is it. But this chip, XC610, is ridiculous. It's one of those things that, how can they even do that? It's a Zin chip. And it says, the XC610 chip is a very low power, high performance and highly integrated system on chip with Bluetooth 4.2 BLE transceiver. It integrates a high performance 2.4 GHz RF transceiver, rich features, baseband, 32-bit MCU, uh, 1 megabit flash, 120 kilobytes RAM. It's ridiculous. This thing is just ridiculous. Uh, the data sheet is available online if you search for... XC610 Bluetooth, you'll find it. It turns out that it's very similar to the ones used in these, including probably something similar in Apple's uh, Air Biscuits or whatever they call them, the trackers. Air Tracker, probably. Uh, let's explore the circuitry. This is the back of the circuit board up here, which I flipped around. That's why the text is all the wrong way around. Uh, the reason I flipped it around is these correlate to what's here and so that you can see where tracks are going. The incoming supply comes on here, and it's like this, they've planned to have a connector with solid mountings here with these two pads, but in this case, they just soldered them straight onto these wires. You can see a little bit of flux there. The light blue indicates the zero volt rail across the whole thing. The red indicates the incoming supply from 5 to 12 volts. In this case, it's 5 volts. And the orange here indicates 3.3 volts via this regulator to that pin. And the purple down here indicates about 1.2 volts for its own internal voltage regulator, which is pretty much how the Apple Air Biscuits were hacked. They've had their firmware dumped from them by glitching something like that, the internal reference supply, by using a script to glitch it down to the zero volt rail while it's booting up uh, and then changing the timing until, well, basically you can communicate via receive and transmit, they actually managed to dump the firmware from Apple's new product. Awesome. Nice. So the supply, the positive goes via this big fat track over to the output for the LEDs, but it also goes to this little regulator 662L, which creates a 3.3 volt supply with a couple of decoupling capacitors for the chip. The chip has a 32 megahertz crystal or resonator. They've left their options open. This is an integrated package, but if they'd used a crystal, they've got the two load uh, capacitors available here. But that basically goes to these two pins marked XT. Um, the MOSFETs are driven directly from pulse with modulation output pins. These, being a typical microcontroller, the pins can be assigned different functions and you can assign a pulse with modulator to specific pins. They've done that, but it's notable that the green pin also doubles during the boot sequence as the boot pin. Uh, so you've got this three pin connector on this side, which if you were to probe that, uh, while the system's being tested, I'm guessing this is the test connector, it will supply 3.3 volts or check the for 3.3 volts and the zero volts and it'll also look for information being transmitted back from the unit for debugging purposes. On the back, there are four pins that you could connect, ground, receive, 
transmit and boot. I think as it powers up, if the boot is taken into a particular logic state, it maybe puts it into debugging mode and then you can actually just use a terminal to actually communicate with it to put new firmware in or, or analyze what's happening inside, general debugging. Um, what else is there to say? Not a lot. The yellow pin here is the RF output. No fancy circuitry. It's got a few spare components like an inductor for filtering if they felt they needed it. But really, it's just a capacitor in line. Going to that pad with a little dangly wire hanging off. That's the antenna there, this little red wire. And it's interesting to note that the pad for the antenna has a matching pad on the back, but it's not connected through the pleated through hole, they've done that presumably so that it floods the copper fill in the ground plane around that and it doesn't cu couple capacitively onto the back of the ground plane, it's just basically to create a, an area of clearance. Uh, that's it. There's not really much else to say. This little chip is apparently used in things like these trackers it, because it's super low power. I mean, it's ridiculously... For such a powerful chip, it's just pretty much unbelievable. It's it's the star of this particular video. Um, and keep in mind that for £8.50, I got the little module and five metres of LED tape with the uh, 5 volt arrangement, uh, three resistors per LED and 30 LEDs per metre. So when you add it all up together, it's... It just shows you, but well, particularly, you can get these for a few pounds, can't you? So, or dollars. So it just shows you how integrated they become. I mean, that little chip that's hiding in things like this is just ludicrously powerful. Very impressive. But that's it. As you can see, there's no point drawing it out. It's just basically regulator, chip with its crystal, three MOSFETs. That pretty much sums it up with a few decoupling capacitors thrown in. It's... A spectacular little chip.